Hello and welcome to Press TV's News Analysis, coming out of Tehran, I'm Marzia Hashimi. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has offered a new initiative to end the crisis in his country, which includes talks and a referendum. But so far, Assad has gotten a thumbs-down reaction from the opposition and their foreign backers who simply say that Assad must go. Now, the Syrian government says it will never give in to terrorism. Stay with us as we take an in depth view of the latest situation coming out of Syria. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has outlined a plan to help resolve the ongoing crisis in his country politically. Regional countries and international countries will be committed to stopping financing and arming and harboring the armed groups at the same time. The armed groups must stop all the terrorist acts. And after that, the military operations by the Syrian armed forces will stop. Number two to find a mechanism that everybody will be committed. Number three, the current government will directly begin with comprehensive contacts with all of the members of Syrian society to hold a national dialogue conference whereby all of those parties who want a solution in Syria, all of them can participate, whether they be parties inside Syria or outside Syria. President Assad says the reconciliation conference will reach a national charter that reinforces Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity rejects interference in its domestic affairs and abandons terror. The National Charter will then be put to a popular referendum. After its approval, a government formed of all Syrian groups would abide by the laws which were agreed upon in the National Reconciliation Conference, including the election law. President Assad stressed his government is ready for talks with anyone who cares about the security of Syria. We will hold dialogue with political parties and individuals who didn't sell our country to strangers. We will hold dialogue with those who laid down arms. Assad says the current confrontation in Syria is not between the government and the opposition, but between Syria and its enemies. He said the government is fighting against those who want to weaken Syria and promised that it will continue to defend the nation against terrorists and their foreign backers. Damascus accuses the U.S. and its allies Turkey, Qatar and Saudi Arabia of financing and arming the opposition. The Syrian National Coalition, which represents foreign-backed opposition groups, has rejected President Assad's call for national reconciliation. It says the plan is against international efforts to resolve the Syrian crisis. The opposition's Western backers have also rejected Assad's plan. The European Union insisted that the Syrian president must step down to allow for political transition. Britain accused Assad of giving empty promises. The opposition and their foreign supporters have at various occasions rejected talks with the government. In fact, they're accused of working against international plans for a political solution, including the Geneva Agreement, and obstructing the work of UN and Arab League observer missions who are set to oversee the implementation of a peace plan. Some observers believe external players are trying to hinder political efforts to prepare the grounds for military intervention, and that, they say, is aimed at achieving a greater goal, Syrian regime change and ultimately partition. But so far, these goals are far from being achieved, as it seems government troops are simply too tough to be defeated. Well, I'd like to welcome my guest to the program out of London from the Syrian Social Club, Mr. Haytham al-Sabahi. And out of Damascus, uh, freelance journalist and analyst, Allah Ibrahim. And uh, out of Washington, senior fellow and direct, uh, director of the Center for Political Military Analysts at uh, Hudson Institute, Mr. Richard White. Thank you all for being with us. Well, let's start it off in London uh, with Mr. Al Sabahi. How significant overall do you see the president's speech uh, being? I mean, uh, good evening to you good and evening. to your guests and viewers, first of all. Um, the, pre the president's uh, speech today was the turning point, <coughs> sorry, in the Syrian crisis to, from military to a political one. He outlined and the exact what the Syrian people or most of the Syrian people want to hear out of politicians. Uh, they, want to, they want to know is the crisis where it's going, especially after the last two weeks when we've been hearing there is a, a political solution to the Syrian crisis and all sorts of rumors. So the president came out today and uh, he put his plan on the table, which is 
acceptable from uh, most of the Syrians because that's what we want to see. We want to see uh, uh, going uh, the government to go forward with its plan for for the solution in Syria. Uh, d despite uh, after the West, I mean. Uh, and uh, the countries who were inflaming the, the, the military crisis in Syria, like Qatar and Saudi Arabia, uh, and uh, of course with their masters, the United States, uh, has taken a step back. The Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad, took a step forward. And that's the, this, the, this, instead of going back with them and start, uh, you know, tick for tack, he's taking the step forward. He is the... Uh, outlined the, the, the crisis in Syria, divided the Syrians to uh, Syrians who carry arms on, on, on the Syrian soil, which may, may lay down their arms. And there is, on the other side, the Takfiris and the Jihadis, who is being pushed by the United States and its allies to, to come to Syria. And the third of them is the pawns, the chess pawns, who they are outside the countries when the president said, we don't need to speak to you. You are just the slaves to your masters. Okay, we well, let, speak, well, let me turn to we Mr. Uh, to let me turn to Damascus and get Mr. Ibrahim on this. What about that, Mr. Ibrahim? Uh, the, the president has said basically that he's going to deal and he's basically giving an olive branch to those inside of the country who laid their, down their arms. But uh, this uh, solution, whatever solution is going to come about, it has to come from with within the country itself. Immediately, we have seen reactions, first of all, from the opposition and also from their Western backers, basically saying no deal, that the only solution is President Bashar al-Assad stepping down. Why do you think that we have seen such an immediate and harsh reaction from them? Because whatever the president says, whatever the president does, it's irrelevant to how uh, these external sides view the crisis in Syria. For entities like the European Union, for, ex for example, who have been asking the president to leave his office uh, one or two months into the crisis, it would be only natural for them to continue with this uh, quest to ask the president to step down as they did today. Also, when we speak about the, the coalition, the opposition, the coalition of opposition and revolutionary powers, uh, also known as the Doha coalition, the coalition also uh, is was founded on the basis of rejecting any dialogue with the current Syrian government and trying to overthrow it using power and asking for more arms supply from the external backers of the opposition. So I think the problem with the, the president's speech today are the problem with many people with the president's speech today is high expectations. No speech can solve the crisis. No plan, no matter how good or elaborate it may seem, can solve the crisis right now. The situation is very complex. And unfortunately, the fact remains that it's all up to field developments. If the government forces are gaining grounds, then the president can dictate conditions on the external uh, players and the external backers of opposition. And if they're not, I think he will be more wi more willing to accept the conditions of those foreign players. Okay, well, let me uh, turn to Mr. White in uh, Washington. Uh, now, Mr. White, uh, what the uh, president has basically said, that this is uh, not a revolution, uh, because in revolutions, uh, basically, the revolutionaries do not kill their own people. But he said that this is a war, that foreigners are basically trying to destroy the country. Your take, sir. Uh, well, it's wrong on two accounts. I mean, one, historically, we know that revolutions are incredibly uh, vicious and destructive. We have the civil war in China, in um, Russia, in the French Revolution, I mean, even the American Revolution, uh, these, those are incredibly violent. Uh, it, the second point, the foreigners, not, I'm not aware that the countries that are backing the opposition are trying to destroy Syria. I think. Some of them are trying to destroy the Assad regime. Um, but to go back, I think that the previous speaker was fairly correct in his analysis. From what I've seen, this kind of a, a gesture would have made a big difference after the first months of protests when Turkey and the U.S. and other countries were still thinking that Assad could lead the reform effort 
at this point, it won't make any difference. I mean, I think that the fa the the power now is in the in the street and in the field commanders, and they're and they're going to fight until um, Assad leaves or until they're defeated militarily. I think it's going to be one side or the other will win. Uh, I don't see a political transition or a coalition government at this point. It's just gone on too long, and the factions who are fighting have been too polarized now to reach that kind of a deal. Okay, what about that? Uh, turning to London, Mr. Al Sabiyayi, what do you think about what our previous speaker has said, uh, that basically <clears throat> it's too late for what President Assad has put on the table today, <clears throat> excuse me, that if he had done it earlier on, perhaps it would have been more acceptable and that the people in the streets now will not accept what he is saying. <coughs> what the President Assad today said, exactly what the Syrian people, they say. I mean, th for this crisis, there were a few points or f and a few agendas. Uh, it was taken from the streets to arms to fights and in the last two, three months has reached the top. And when the, the, the countries who they were pushing those rebels and bringing those tech theories through uh, to Turkey and from Turkey, push them to Syrian border and sending the money, uh, fueling the situation in Syria, seen the, they have seen there is no military solution to topple the government in Syria and uh, to take over. So now they start uh, res residing, residing to, to go back to a political solution and they might, they're trying to win one point in here and uh, here or there. Uh, let me say about the, the coalition or the outside co Syrian coalition uh, led by Ma'ak al Khatib. I mean, this is one thing, the, this coalition it is the umbrella for for United States, uh, Britain, Saudi Arabia, Qatar. This is the umbrella for their politics. Of course, the the, the, the coalition is going to uh, refuse, say no, no, no. They are on the no issues all the time. And as as Mr. Lavrov uh, said, I mean they are very naive in politics. Uh, but uh, the president today also did it outline only politics. He outlined and also where we're we going to take the fight with the terrorists and with this group he, call, uh, he called Al-Qaeda, he called them Al-Qaeda, Jabhat al-Nusra and the other group. We will fight this group because there is no dialogue with these groups and there, there is no solution with this group. This group being pushed to Syria to die in Syria or take over or turn Syria to, to chaos. So there, there, there is uh, two points here. Uh, the, the president uh, uh, of Syria has, has uh, taken the issues to the Syrian people. Mm -hmm. When he says a dialogue, um, uh, what you call it, a national conference, uh, national chapter, being a uh, whole referendum from the Syrian people for, for whatever we agreed for. So he's taking the political initiative from the hands of everybody, okay. put it in the hand of the Syrian politician, and from there in the hands of the Syrian population. Okay, what about